Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. You know, it's a boy I'm making, and today I'm gonna be giving you part four of Uchi and Naruto the Sage. And get this one to 50 likes as usual, and you'll be getting the next part. Remember to share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And when this is finished, be prepared for two what if on my main channel. I'll be posting two what if later on, and I hope you guys enjoy them. And if this is the first time you hear my voice, this is my second channel, Anime King 2. My main channel is Anime King with over 300 lovely what ifs. And I hope you guys enjoy and go over and check them out. So yeah, get this one to 50 likes as usual. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. Start the intro. So basically in the last part, Madara revealed his identity to Naruto as Naruto was shocked but he was at total disbelief. Madara told Naruto about his parents and Naruto was happy for that but he hated the Fortokage for what he did to him by sealing this beast inside of him and making everyone hate him. But he was sad at the same time that he lost his mother, he thought that they abandoned him but he really did have a family. And they loved him, but they died. But he still, his blood still boiled for the Fortokage as he hated him. Naruto didn't believe that Madara was really Madara Uchiha because in the history books it was told that Madara died a long time ago. But Naruto believed that Madara was his grandfather. Although the signs are clearly there as he has a Sharingan, but Naruto still don't believe. So basically that was the last part when Madara took Naruto to his hideout and tell Naruto that he is going to become his sensei. If you guys are new, check across the playlist and check out from part 1. But without that, let's get straight into this part. As Madara asked Naruto if he wanted to become a student, Naruto nodded quickly. Good, said Madara, because I only have a few years before this body gives out. I have lived too long. In these few years, I will train you and make sure I build your body to be a powerful body indeed. He then paused for a moment. Naruto, you will have to live two lives from now on. What I show you here can never be revealed to anyone. Is what I say clear? He asked him. As he looked at stern looked at Naruto. Naruto just nodded as he understood. Okay, said Madara. I will cast a genjutsu on you to make the changes of your body not being shown to the people of Konoha when you began training. So when do we begin training? Now? Yes indeed. What? said Naruto as he was surprised. He want to begin now? Listen boy, said Madara. I don't have much time left. When I meet, met you. I wanted you to warm up to me, that is why I allowed you to enjoy your childhood for the past months that I've been there. But from now on, you will no longer be pampered like a child. Your childhood is over. Naruto looked at his grandfather with wide eyes. The man was taking over his life. Madara sighed as he looked at Naruto. Fine, he said. We will begin your training in a week. For now. I will show you around the hideout and make you get familiar with the place. What about Jiji? Naruto asked as he called the Turtokage Jiji. And what about the academy at Konoha? We will just have to find a way for you to be at two places at one time. As the time go on, said Madara. Madara showed Naruto around a large hideout but he did not show Naruto everything. He only showed him the rooms and the training ground, which he was used when he's in the hideout. Naruto had to learn everything before he saw everything around the hideout. 
now is not the right time for him to tell Naruto everything because he still had a couple of years left, some good years. After he finished showing him around, he brought Naruto back to Konoha. He will go and get him in a week and his training will start then. Naruto was excited but he was a bit sad that his grandfather wanted to take over his life. He was too god demanding as Naruto think it over in his head but he was still happy that he's going to get some serious real training. Soon he will be able to defend himself against anyone but he was also sad that his grandfather only had a couple of years. The only person left in his life as a family will be dead soon Naruto thought about it. At the academy, Naruto walked into his class with his usual grin on his face. He had been early to class today because he had missed the previous two days. He then walked up as he saw a boy sleeping. Shikamaru, Naruto called out as he wake up the sleeping boy. He had been able to find a few people that he could talk with and play with whenever he was at the academy and they didn't look at him with pure hatred in their eyes and disgust. They were like his friends, Nara Shikamaru, the heir of the Nara clan. He was smart, too smart for his own good, Naruto said to himself a lot of time, but he had a kind personality towards Naruto and didn't treat him like most people did in the village. Shikamaru despite being a genius like any Nara, he had something that kind of dropped his standards. He was super lazy. The boy sometimes just sleep outside or sometimes he just look up in the air looking at the clouds. He doesn't really want to do anything while class was going on or sometimes he just fall asleep in class and Aruka had to shout at him and wake him up and then a few seconds had passed he fall asleep again. He seemed to be always bored and he always used the word drag and Naruto. Think of that as a silly word. He seemed like nothing can really interest him. He doesn't seem like he wants to become a ninja. Naruto always thought as he saw the laziness of Shikamaru. But he was different from other kids. He was the first one in the class to call Naruto over so him and Naruto and his friends could play. He knew that people hated Naruto but that didn't mind to him because he didn't really care. Shikamaru had a friend who was also a clan heir, Choji. Choji was also kind of Shikamaru but he hated when people call him fatso or fat. He enjoyed eating chips and he didn't really seem bored like Shikamaru. He was mostly excited when he was eating chips and Naruto loved that about him as he showed no hatred towards Naruto as well. And Naruto two other friends was Kiba and Shino. The both of them treated him the same way as well as they didn't show hatred towards him as they made him play with them. Back with Naruto as Naruto grinned at Shikamaru did your mother make you wake up too early? Again, Naruto asked if there was something more that Shikamaru found troublesome, it was his mother. And he also feared her more than anything. His mother hated his lazy attitude and always wake him up early in the morning. Yes, yeah, said Shikamaru, I cannot get some peaceful sleep around here. It's been like that for the past few days, he said with a grunt in his voice. Huh. Naruto just let out a small chuckle. Man, I wish I was you, Shikamaru said as he went back to sleep making Naruto shake in his head. Naruto then felt a pair of eyes staring at him. He quickly turned around. It was Hinata. Hayuga. Hayuga Hinata, Naruto thought to himself. She was always staring at him and acting very nervous when he was close by. And he found her very weird. She acted all day around him, but Naruto didn't understand that she was shy and lacked of self-confidence. Naruto's eyes were taken off of the girl as the door burst open as Sasuke, the top of the class, walked in. Naruto didn't like the Ochiha's attitude. It is why he never spent a second waste thinking about the boy. 
The Uchiha look out of breath. Fangirls, I bet you. Naruto thought, as the Uchiha boy was popular in the female department and the girls were always chasing him and he was running from them. If I had that, Naruto said to himself, I will always be stopping and let them catching up to me. But he seems to be kind of weird. Maybe he's into dudes, Naruto thought to himself as a crazy idea popped in his head as he looked at Sasuke as Sasuke stared back at him. The both of them were having a heated steering contest until the door burst open again and two girls rushed in the class. It was Sakura and Inu as the both of them fight each other to get near Sasuke. Sakura was way too loud Naruto thought to himself. She didn't have a mute button, she just loved to talk and she was the most one that was obsessed with Sasuke. Naruto then went to his seat as the class began to fall. Naruto decided to take a nap but he stopped as he was against it seeing that Aruka will be in the class soon enough and Aruka seemed to have something towards him as Aruka ever cursed at him or sent him out of the class when he was not paying attention. Soon later, Aruka walked in the class with a stack of paper as he said, I hope you all are ready for the test as everyone quiet down. Naruto looked at Shikamaru as Shikamaru had a shocked expression on his face. He had woken up. Did we have a test today? He thought to himself. That was so troublesome, he said. I didn't even study as he let out a huge yawn. Naruto said nothing. He did not care about passing the test. He still had a few years in the academy to make up for lost time if he wastes his time earlier. So when his grandfather teach him, he will become stronger and he will be able to do anything and he will pass the academy with flying colors. When Naruto got the test and Aruka said they had 30 minutes, Naruto realized that all the books that Madara gave him, they gave him all the answers. It was a history test. But Naruto had to play like an idiot for now as he didn't want people to put the spotlight spotlight at him as he answered all the questions wrong even a half brain idiot would have gotten those right but naruto just write pure rubbish on the paper he didn't even answer any one of them right as he did for spite wanted everyone to think that he's a dead last in the class after the test aruka gave him a lecture as he then let them go home naruto walked beside choji and shikamaru as they made their way out of the academy grounds. Me and Shikamaru are going to get some pork, said Choji as he rubbed his belly. Some barbecue pork, he said out loud. No, Choji, I will have to pass today. I'm sorry, said Naruto. Man, I had thought we would have did another eating contest. Well, that just leave more food for me, Choji thought, as Naruto chuckled. I'll see you guys tomorrow, he said, as he then went off his own direction, as they said goodbye to each other. A few days later, the Uchiha massacre, one of the greatest tragedies to ever occur inside of Konoha, beside the Kayubi rampage, happened. The whole Uchiha clan was massacred by Itachi, but leaving one alive, his younger brother, Sasuke Uchiha. One man massacre as his whole clan in a single night. The Uchiha clan was known to be the strongest clan inside of Konoha. But I guess one man was powerful than all of them. The rumors spread as it spread around all of the five great nations. As Naruto heard the news, he wondered what kind of power did Itachi had to massacre his own clan in one night, he must have something powerful that he could pull that off and nothing happened to him. Naruto thought to himself as he wanted power like Itachi's. But Naruto didn't understand because what he heard about Itachi that he was a kind and peaceful person before he joined the Anvu. But he just lost it Naruto thought to himself as he overheard the news fled the village after he massacred his clan and now he's a wanted S-rank criminal and he must be captured 
and there is a high bounty on his head. Naruto did not feel sad. He wasn't part of their clan, even though his grandfather was a Uchiha, he didn't really care about them. He just pitied Sasuke, knowing that young Uchiha would be crushed. Having his parents killed by his own brother. At Madara hideout, as Naruto sit down with Madara, Grandfather, do you know about the Uchiha massacre? Naruto asks. Yes, said Madara. Those traitors got what they deserved. Naruto looked at his grandfather curiously. He had come to accept that his grandfather was indeed Madara Uchiha. So that made him the founder of the Uchiha clan and the co-founder of Konoha. He thought that he would be a little sad that his whole clan was dead, but he didn't seem sad at all. Why did you call them traitors, grandfather? Naruto asked. When I founded Konoha with that other man, Konoha selected him as first Okage instead of me. I told my clan that the Saint Jews will take over and will try to control us. But those fools refused to believe me and supported Hoshirama. And over the past years, the Uchiha clan was stripped of their power and they were reduced to only the police force of Konoha. Madara said as he looked at Naruto. Naruto could see that his grandfather was truly happy that the Uchiha clan has been massacred. Planned just because he wanted to test his power. Naruto simply nodded as Madara shook his head. They were killed because of ignorance. They had come to believe that Konoha leaders were pushing them away. The founders of Konoha had hid them far in the village outskirts. They even had them locked up when the Kayube attacked because they could use their Sharingan and control the great beasts. I still don't understand, Naruto said. How was he able to kill them all? Well, the Uchiha clan was preparing a coup to fight back the village of Konoha. That was the only way they could get their power back. Something like that would have led to a civil war inside of Konoha. Madara explained, seeing that there is no point leaving Naruto out in the dark about the truth behind the Uchiha massacre. Naruto had wide eyes seeing what his grandfather was saying, so Itachi killed his own clan to avoid a civil war? Madara then nodded, you catch on fast son. How do you know this? Naruto asked. You spend your time here and this only occurred 4 days ago. Madara smiled as he placed his hand on top of Naruto's head. I know everything that is happening inside of Konoha. Nothing can hide from me. I am the co-founder of the village. When the village was being formed, I was there. But for now, forget about that. Shall we start your training? Yes, said Naruto. I was ready for this. The academy has been closed for three weeks. So, can I stay here for a few days and we can train? Madara nodded, already preparing a room for Naruto inside of the hideout. Before we begin your training, Naruto, I want you to meet someone, Madara said, as a Zetsu then came out of the ground. Naruto, this is Zetsu. What is he? Naruto asked Madara. Madara chuckled, he is my spy and my creation. Naruto only understand what the word spy meant. He didn't understand what Madara meant by creation. He knew what that word meant, but it wasn't able for someone to create a life, right? You can go now, Zetsu, Madara said, as Zetsu sank back in the ground. Okay, said Madara. We will begin your training in physical training. We need to strengthen your body. For the next year, you will be staying here until you awaken your Sharingan and then we will focus on your ninjutsu. Won't um, Saratobi be looking for me? Naruto asks. Don't worry, I will help you create a blood clone that will replace you in Konoha for the next year. The clone will last for a year and will, it will be a perfect replica of you and no one will be able to tell the difference. Naruto nodded and smiled brightly. Now, Naruto, let's begin with your training, said Madara, 
as Naruto got up as he was pumped. As Madara then ran through some hand signs as he said summoning Jutsu as he placed his hand on the ground. As Madara then summoned weights as Madara then told Naruto to put these on as Naruto put them on. What the hell are these? Those are weights. The farther you go in your training, I will increase them. By releasing the seal on them, they will go up to 500 pounds each. As Naruto then placed the weights on his feet. But Naruto felt like it was impossible for him to move even with this. Naruto, you must do 50 laps. After that, 50 sit-ups and then 100 punch and kickies to that dummy over there, Madara said as Naruto saw a dummy. Naruto stood there for a minute as he was not moving as Madara hit him in the head with his cane and told Naruto to begin as Naruto then struggled as he pushed off and started his training. At the end of the day, Naruto lost consciousness. Zetsu had to carry him back inside as he spent the whole day outside training and getting stronger but it was just too much for his body as he passed out. When Naruto woke up, Madara told him that with the Kayubi inside of him, any damage he did to his body while training, it would be healed while he slept. It would be foolish not to take that advantage, Madara said. As, for the time being, Naruto kept on training, recovering overnight. Six months later, Madara had finished telling Naruto about the Sage of Six Path he needed to start at the beginning if he wanted Naruto to understand everything. Naruto listened well when his grandfather was telling him about the Sage and his legendary eyes, the Renegon. The eyes gave you the Sage ability to control over life and death as Naruto found those eyes really intriguing. You will be able to learn any jutsu in existence. Madara then told Naruto that he took Hoshirama cell after telling him everything about the Sage of Six Path and that he was able to unlock the Renegon at an old age. He then told Naruto that he transplanted them into a Uzumaki orphan. Why did you do that? Naruto could not understand why Madara will give away such a powerful dojutsu. I will tell you about that later. It's a plan that is setting off, said Madara. Naruto nodded. So that is the reason why you have Hashirama cell. You have his face in your chest, Naruto asked, as Madara nodded. As he already showed Naruto the face of Hashirama. Naruto, I want to infuse Hashirama cell inside of you and myself as well. With that, you will be able to unlock the Renegon. Madara said to Naruto. But guys, I'm in this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment below, and turn on that bell notification. But I'm off now, guys. Peace.